Coming up at the half, a reminder, we go back to Orlando to check in with Jonathan Coachman. He'll have a look back at our first half as well as a look ahead. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Buffalo touchdown. Tyler Croft, his second touchdown on the season as his guys are back within a single score. The big fellow was the recipient there for that touchdown pass, and it seems like more and more the tight end is the guy you have to worry about most in the passing game. Extra point up and good by Bullock, and that makes it a 14-10 ball game. Now Bullock will send this one away after the touchdown. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Here he is, the man taking the snaps under center, heading out for the next possession. Now he's looked pretty good. Does have the one interception, but two touchdown passes so far. Your analysis. They'll take the offs under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Big Shaq Lawson gets the sack there. Brandon, if I'm an offensive coordinator and I see an all-out rush like that, I file it away because I'm going to use their aggressiveness against them as this game goes on. I'm going to hit them with a screen soon. Now, following the sack, they'll look to make amends on a second down and 17. Dancing to his left. And Charles got to like what this defense has been able to do these last couple of plays. Yeah, they get the sack on first down, then they force the incomplete pass. Now they're just a play away from getting the football right back, but it's a big play. They've got to hold up. Now the throw on third down, knocked away and incomplete. Boy, the numbers throwing the football, just not trending in the right direction. Last week he was under 50%. He's under 50% again here. And we haven't gotten an announcement, but it appears to me that he might be a little dinged up and is just trying to play through. You know, he's one of those tough guys that wants to answer the bell each and every play for his team. That might be throwing off his accuracy. And he gets this to the other side of midfield across the 45 before going out. Out comes Zay Jones with the rest of his offense as they take the field. With them losing here in the second quarter and his limited productivity so far, you'd have to think they're going to try to look to him a little bit more, right? I would guess you would start to see maybe some quick screens, some hitches, anything to get the ball in his hands quickly and let him try and do some damage after the catch. Or maybe just flip some formations and keep him isolated where it's more of a one-on-one -on -one route and get the ball to him. I say just four verts, right? Hey, why not? Four verts for <laughs> the best routes in football. And he is into the end zone for a Buffalo touchdown. Miles Boykin, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Bills have taken the lead. He was on point throwing the ball right there. He had the big play to get him down close, and then he delivers a touchdown pass on first and goal. And you mentioned the big play that got him down close. I think that big play left him reeling a little bit. They didn't recover from it. And you know they always talk about having to have a short memory on defense after a big play against you? Looks like their memory was a little too long there. Now Bullock will send this one away after the touchdown. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Now Corey Davis and the rest of his offense getting for their... Next drive. He's been good so far to this point in the second quarter. Need to get him even more involved, maybe? I would agree with that. Definitely. Uh, yeah, it's not even a question for me. The way he's playing, he's doing a nice job. Increase things. More touches, more opportunities. Maybe that can reverse things on the scoreboard for them. They'll try to ratchet things up then maybe here in the second quarter. And an alley to run. And he's going to get a good gain of nine here up to the 34. What an advantage having a lead guy in the middle of the defensive line because not only does he take up the space and let the linebackers run free, but he can also make plays himself as we just saw there. And they're going to take a timeout defensively. So with fourth down coming up, they go ahead and burn it and say we'll see what happens. And likely time for one final play here in the half, so they will go for it on fourth down. Back to throw. Fisher forced out to his left. Now he's going to throw deep back over the middle. And that's caught inside the 30. And they do finally get it, but he takes it to the 25. So we've hit halftime. Just a field goal separating these two teams at the break. As we send you down to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, guys, thanks very much. We'll get back with you shortly. But first, 
Let's take a look at what's coming up this weekend around the NFL. In the early window, we'll have our eye on that game in Jacksonville. The Jaguars going to need to be on their A game as they get set to take on the Dallas Cowboys. Good stuff to follow on the West Coast in the afternoon window. One being out in Oakland, where it'll be the Raiders taking on the Denver Broncos. And then finally, the national game on Sunday night. It's a good one between the Miami Dolphins and the New York Jets. In the game you're watching, it was Josh Allen who was on target in that first half. His guys lead, though by only a field goal. Still anybody's game. As we send it back to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Thank you, sir. A field goal separates these two teams. As we come back for this second half, Bills with the lead, and they'll get the football first as the second half is underway. This fielded at the two. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. The Bills come to the line to start their next drive. They have the lead, now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers, or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half, and they've had ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. <laughs> show them one thing, hit them with something else. So they fake the handoff. Now Allen. And he fires one, but incomplete. So they look like maybe his third or his fourth read on his progression. Just trying to find his outlet man that time. Ends up leading him just a bit too much. On is the punt team now as this one sent away. And that one hits at the seven but bounds into the end zone and that'll be a touchback. The Titans offense gears up for their first possession of the second half. They're down in this game. A chance for the offense though to put something on the board. Get some momentum here in half two try and get things kick-started for them. And you know at the half, they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting comes into play a lot how, of the how time. How many plays do you script coming out of the second half? Most, most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 to 16. I think in the second half, you're really scripting more like 8 to 10. Kind of a starter or an opener, whatever they 